Hi, I'm Brian Vance, SportBikeTrackGear.com, and today I'm going to walk you through the Driven Fender Eliminator install on our 2018 STG Ninja 400 Project Bike. Okay, so with the install, you can see it's already done. If you want to see the whole thing, stay tuned. We're going to show you every step from wiring up the turn signals and the plate light to dealing with the flasher, okay? There's options. With the Driven Kit, there are options. You can get just the fender eliminator that comes without this bitchin' plate frame that's lit. He just came out with that, that's brand new. Or the turn signals, okay? So you would get just the brackets that would accept the license plate, okay? No frame. It has the holes in it to take aftermarket LED style turn signals. It doesn't really accommodate OE turn signals at all. So if you wanted to go with, say, an integrated tail light, which isn't quite out yet, and no signals, well, then you would order the kit that only has the plate bracket to it, okay? If you want to have the LED turn signals, you like the driven ones, I think they look bitchin'. Those are LED. They have a kit that includes those. We're going to talk about flash rate right now. These are LED as compared to the incandescent, the standard stuff that was there. The load is different from the LED to the others. So when you install these with the stock flasher, which I have in my hand right here, they flash really fast. Nobody digs that. Okay, Driven also sells a flasher relay. We're going to show you where it's located on this bike and how to install it that allows you to get the flash rate under control. Okay. That is with the relay installed. You can see too. Looks pretty bitching with that new plate, the lighted plate frame that he came up with. So the stuff you see here, it's not all included. The, the lit plate frame, that's an add-on piece. There's two different styles of Fender Eliminator. It's also important to note that the way they're doing their kits there, it's unique compared to the competition. For example, here's the non-lit plate frame. I mean, that's machined aluminum, okay? The entire Fender kit is built like that. It's really heavy duty anodized aluminum. It looks great on the bike. You can see the end result is really good. A lot of the other companies we see more the uh, maybe powder coated, you know, bent sheet metal. Okay, good gauge for sure, you know, but the stuff that Gnome did over here at Driven, it's just, it's, it's different. I kind of dig that. I like the end result. If you like what you see and you want to watch the full install, you're interested in doing this on your Ninja, go ahead. This install will also really be helpful with almost any brand fender eliminator. So I'm gonna take you through the entire process, including wiring up the turn signals, like I said, the flasher relay, the whole bit. Okay, we're gonna begin this install by removing the stock rear fender. You can see this thing is huge and exceptionally ugly. Take your passenger seat off to do that. Insert the key right here. Turn it clockwise, lift up, pull forward. This comes right off. This tray, you can release this by pushing inward on that, right? It's going to lift it up. Realistically, you could do the project with it just in the upright position. To gain a little more access, I'm going to go ahead and pull the cotter pins out of the hinges so I can slide it out of there. It's just going to give us more room, make it easier for you guys to see what I'm doing. Okay, once you've done that, let's go ahead and expose the wiring for the turn signals and that license plate light. Depending on the kit you're installing and whether or not it offers a license plate light, you may or may not reuse all of the stock harnesses. Slide this protective boot back. to expose the connectors. They are a little tight, okay? They definitely are a little to the tight side here. Push down on the release tang. Just give you a close look at that right there is what you want to push down on, okay? Use this T-handle to point at it right here. You push down on that, that's gonna allow you to release the connector. And the next one, push down that release, 
like so. You should not have to pull very hard after you've depressed the release, okay? If you have to pull really hard, that means it's not disengaged and you're in danger of damaging the wires and you don't want to do that. You can see that we have two different style connectors here. This one, in order to release it, you need to push down essentially right here and that will release it from the other side of the connector. At this point, you can take each of these three harnesses and slide them through the tail. There's a hole right there, slides right through. From here, we're going to grab our 5 mil T-handle. Got four fasteners to remove. Boy, once again, I gotta give it to Kawasaki here, man. This was really well engineered. And certainly easy to take apart and work on, which is great because this bike is going to be really popular with not only you know seasoned riders but certainly new riders. And it's a great way to get you introduced to the sport and to a big part of it which is wrenching on your own machine. There you have it. There is that stock rear fender and notice this there's a metal brace on the inside here plastic shroud and then of course we've got you know, our standard plastic slash rubber turn signals. This thing is huge and it's actually kind of heavy, so installing a fender eliminator on this bike, you're going to shave some weight back here in the tail section. Okay, now we're going to prep the wiring harnesses for our new license plate light and our new turn signals, okay? I like to reuse the OE connectors. In order to do that, we're going to cut each one of these somewhere right around the midpoint, okay? You want to leave yourself plenty of wire to work with. It's also important to note that we have color-coded turn signals. Gray is going to be for the left side, black is for the right. Using side cutters, I'm just going to cut those right in the middle. Do something similar here with our license plate. Put this to the side. And now you can see from the factory, okay, this stuff is all kind of taped off here. For the license plate light, you can just pull the tape, slide the protective uh, covering back. That'll allow us to trim this a little shorter and get the wires prepped. I'm just going to actually just mow that right off. Kind of look at that, see what we've got. Cut just a little bit more than that off. Because you have to have enough room on this end to get your connectors in. I'm going to go ahead and slide this back over. And of course, for the end result, you want to have something that looks professional. Okay, it looks as close to factory as possible and you want to make sure that all your connectors will be trouble free down the road. The idea is to make the bike better, not create issues for yourself to prevent you from riding and enjoying the bike. So there's a license plate light that's prepped and ready. Now each one of the turn signals, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a razor blade to open these up. Try to be careful not to push too hard and go through the uh, wires, obviously. I want to cut the insulation. There we go. There should be pretty decent. I'm 
same on the other side. Let's try to get an idea for how far back. Now these are going to be ready to accept our new turn signal connectors. Okay, now we're going to attach the driven turn signals, the LED turn signals, to the stock, the OE turn signal connectors here in the back. Just makes that installation a whole heck of a lot cleaner. That's why we cut and save this. We also made sure we're going to have plenty of length to work with. It's important to understand which one of these wires is power and which one is ground. On each, the green wire is power, the black with the yellow tracer, and this is an 18 model, is going to be your ground. On the driven turn signals, you want to keep the polarity correct. Black is ground, yellow is power. Driven supplies connectors to attach to the OE harness that you'll then be able to plug into the driven LED turn signals. Okay, now let's take the OE harness and attach it to the driven LED turn signal. You want to begin by stripping the wire just enough that you're able to attach the new terminal ends. I like to twist them just a little bit. Let's go ahead and slide over, protect the boot. Okay, the terminal ends that were supplied with this, they realistically, to, to crimp these correctly, you need a special pair of crimpers. I'm going to show you how to do it with something you're going to have and not the special tool that you probably do not have and you certainly don't want to go out and buy it just to do these turn signals, okay? Get that wire, twist it just a little bit. You want to make sure that the longer legs, the very bottom, those are going to wrap around the wire insulation. The two legs up here in the middle, those are going to be folded over the wire itself. I'm just going to use a pair of needle nose pliers and do one side at a time. Just kind of fold it over. Take your time here, you want to get a nice result. Just kind of rolling that over like so. Come to the other side, we'll do the same thing. Like that. Okay, now we're going to come right here in the middle of the two and we're going to squeeze it a lot harder. Now you want to check it and make sure that you've got it nice and tight. If it doesn't feel like you have plenty of drag, we're going to continue to compress. Until you don't see any motion from that wire in there. That's held real firm now, okay? Let's take and roll the legs over here. To be fair, these are nice terminal ends. The issue is, the challenge here is, they just require a, a special pair of pliers to crimp them correctly that most people simply are not going to have in a home tool kit, okay? So with patience and a pair of needle nose pliers, we're gonna get ourselves an excellent end result. The most important thing is to make sure that that wire is held in there firmly and it's not sliding back and forth. Okay, now we'll do the other side.
just going to repeat the process that I showed you on the other one. This is really pretty simple stuff. This is all about patience here. One side at a time. Just want to get that started, get it rolling over. And then come over to the other side. Same thing. Make sure everything looks good. And I'll just get after it with a whole lot more pressure. Not quite enough drag, but really close. That looks perfect. Okay, now we'll go ahead and roll it around the insulation. That's just to hold it on there. The side that's the most important is where you're crimping it over the actual wire itself. It's probably not the most exciting thing in the world to watch. I mean, this is literally going to be like watching paint dry on a wall, but at the end of the day, this is going to get you through the project without having to go buy a tool that you'll literally probably, you know, use three times in your life. Double check it, everything looks great. Okay, now this will plug right into that driven turn signal. Okay, we're going to begin installing the driven fender eliminator by getting the main part of the bracket installed on the bike. So these two holes here. It's a good idea to use a little bit of blue thread locker. And you can see I'm going to put it. That's the area where the nut will ride. Okay. Let's get that on there. Slide that up in place. Not going to tighten anything up right now. We're just going to get it all started. Finger tight. Okay, that'll hold in place for us now. Grab the second bolt. like so. Okay, now this needs to slide up in here just like that, okay? And the main body will bolt to this afterwards. We're going to do the same thing we did with the other bolts. Kind of put the thread locker where I expect the nuts to ride. Get this up into position. These are all anodized aluminum pieces, okay? So a little different approach than we see with some of the other fender kits. It's pretty heavy duty. The driven fender eliminator kit too, realistically for this model, you know, reusing your stock turn signals be uh, pretty difficult to do. This is in my opinion, meant to be used with aftermarket turn signals or like we're doing on this install, the driven LED turn signals. Okay, there's two ways to buy the kit. One way is without signals. The other way is, of course, with signals. Get a T-handle. I've got a 10 mil deep well socket here. We can bolt this part down. Okay, that looks good. Now, the main body can be installed on the bike. 
Okay, tapered head fasteners are used here. I'm gonna lock tight these bad boys too. This fender eliminator kit, with or without turn signals, does not have any provision for a license plate light. Driven does have a brand new option. I'm going to show you that as we go through this install. They have a machined aluminum plate frame that has a light in it. It's really pretty sweet. Okay. The T-handle wouldn't fit in here, so I went and got a uh, standard 4 mil Allen. Torque those the rest of the way. Double check. Remember, we have our thread locker in there too. Okay, now let's get the driven turn signals installed on the bracket. Loosen up the nut. I'm going to slide it off like so. I'm going to thread that through here. The wire's right through there. See that stud fits in there real nice. This is actually a uh, non-locking nut, so you know what we're going to do? We are going to just just a little bit of a uh, thread locker in there before we go install it. Okay, that's just finger tight. Same thing on the other side. Take the nut off. Go ahead and thread that through the hole in the bracket, like so. Actually, I'm gonna switch this up just a little bit. I'm gonna slide that out. Pop that through. Okay, now I want to get a wrench. I want to get these things aligned just right, and then we'll tighten them up. I'm going to try and get it, you know, somewhere. You got a good line of sight. Get these as even as possible. I'll make sure we're really visible. Hold on to the turn signal body itself. Okay, and that's not going to require a ton of torque. Actually, loosen it just a little bit. Get a little bit straighter. Like so, and then do the other side. Okay, before we wrap this up, I want to show you the new plate frames that they have. These are machined aluminum. It's actually really cool. Okay, this is the non-lit version, driven logo in black. And then this is the version that has the plate light on it right here at the top, LED plate light. That's what we're gonna install on this. This is additional, this does not come included in the kit, okay? This is definitely a really unique fender eliminator. You gotta give them quite credit there. Super robust, all the machined aluminum. We're gonna prep this harness. There's a ton of wire here, okay? There's definitely a lot more than we need. We're gonna take a look at the stock. Try and get an idea of where I can trim this. And I feel like if we come somewhere back here, pretty reasonable. 
And just like we showed you with the turn signals, need to get the connectors on here. Okay, so the plate frame he sent us with the light in it, it does come with some connectors. I'm out on those. We're not going to use them because I have my stock harness that we preserved. And we're going to reuse that. So all I have to do is attach red to red, black to black, and we're good to go. So we're going to simplify that quite a bit by just using some nice shrinkable butt connectors. Strip your wires away. You could solder these, you can use bud connectors. Whatever works best for you is what I would recommend doing. What I would not do is just twist them together. Okay, that's really not the right way to do it. Crimp it, make sure we've got a good connection there, plenty of drag. Repeat the process. Plenty of drag. Some pretty thin gauge wires here, buddy. Um, but it's just an LED, so it's really not going to take much. So I'm going to strip back quite a ways. I'm going to have to fold these over to get enough thickness to get a good connection inside of that butt connector. Just kind of twist it all up. And then fold it over. It's just going to get me a little more wire to slide inside that butt connector before I compress it. Same thing there. Okay. Slide that in. Good amount of drag. That one was not quite enough. I'm going to hit that again. Okay, there we go. These are shrinkable butts. So we'll go ahead and run through that real quick. Best way to do this is you can see I'm not staying on it for very long, kind of trying to move all the way around it. If you keep the heat in one place, yeah, you're just going to melt it. It's going to start on fire. It's going to be nasty. So get those shrunk up real nice and we'll tape it off. Okay, now I'm going to get this up into position. I've already put some Loctite on the tapered seat fasteners that we're going to use to hold this on. This bike's so new, I don't even have the plate yet. I'm just going to roll that temp tag that we have there. Let's get those started. This is kind of cool. This is new from them. Realistically, not everyone wants to run with that license plate light. Everyone's different. So this affords you the opportunity to do what you feel is right for you. You can go with nothing. You can get that plate frame they have that has no light if you choose to, or you can install the one that I am right now that has the built-in license plate light. So let's get these run down and we'll put some torque to them. Okay, once you've done that, remember we're showing you some optional stuff right now. Not every kit comes with the turn signals, not every kit comes with the license plate light. 
Let's feed the wiring harnesses up through the hole in the tail section. I want to be cognizant which side is which. Okay, so try and keep the left signal on the left side of the tail, the right side on the right. And then we'll feed the license plate light up through. Okay, we're going to revisit the wiring, the external part, before we button the project up. Okay, now we're ready to hook the signals up and the license plate light. Now, if you remember, we identified early on that the gray colored connector, that is going to be for the left side signals, black colored connector for the right. Green was power, black with yellow tracer, that is going to be the ground. So I'm gonna come back here, I'm gonna grab my left turn signal harness. I'm gonna identify that, it's this one right here. The yellow wire is the power for the driven LED signal. Slide that protective boot over. Black, of course, is going to be the ground. Like so. Get the right side done. And when we get this all hooked up, we'll fire the turn signals up. We're going to talk about flash rate. Okay, we replaced standard incandescent bulbs. Okay. They have a little higher resistance, a little higher draw than LEDs do. And that can have an impact on your flash rate, which we'll be able to show you here in just a minute. I'm not gonna tidy all this up right now. We're just gonna get it plugged in. So we can get an idea of where we're at. Are we gonna have to install a flasher? Do we need resistors? What do we need to get that flash rate where we want it? Okay, and then that license plate light is this connector right here. That one was kind of buried in there a little bit. You know, if you find that working with these is a little difficult, okay, you could probably pull the rider seat, remember, pull that cable right there. You know, and get an idea of where these run through here and maybe you can get a little more slack if you feel like you need it. But uh, I'm just going to keep chugging away here and get this bad boy plugged in. On this particular, our bike here, the only one that's really kind of tough to get to is actually that plate light. Okay, everything's plugged in. Let's go ahead and key up. There is that license plate light. That looks cool. That is nice and bright. Now let's check the signals. Turn on the left one. Now you could leave that. If you're cool with that, that's really fast. That's faster than it should be. Okay, and that's because the LED light in the back has you know changed the, the current draw, the load, and the flasher that's installed in the bike right now sees that and the way it reacts to it is it just breaks much faster okay realistically this should be a lot slower we'll finish we'll check the right side so it looks great but that flash rate is just too darn fast in my opinion so now i'm going to show you how to fix that okay driven offers a different turn signal flasher okay Installing this flasher in place of the stock one is going to get that flash rate back where we want it. In order to do this, we do need to disassemble some trim on the bike. I'm probably going to disassemble a little more than you need to so I can get enough access to show you guys exactly what it is that we're doing here, okay? I'm going to start with that side trim panel. Got two fasteners there. And from here, there will be bunch of clips that slide into rubber grommets like so and then kind of roll that out of the way okay the area we're trying to get to is right in here 
man, I could actually reach in there and change the splasher, but you won't be able to see what it is that I'm doing. So it's not gonna be very beneficial. A little trim clip here, pull that out. Or the side meets the fuel tank there. I'm gonna pull this one here too. Remove these two fasteners here. trying to get at and there's a clip right here too you see it goes to the rubber grommet right there that is our OEM turn signal flasher okay you remove it like so it looks a little different externally than the one that we're going to install but they both perform the same function let me go ahead and unplug that, like so. Here's the one from Driven, standard two-prong. I'm just going to let it hang now, and then I'm going to come back, and we're going to secure it to that mount point, probably use a cable tie or something, right? But now let's check the flash rate for the turn signals. Now that's what you want. That is proper cadence there. That looks good. Depending on the brand signal you go with in the back, if you do decide to change the signals and install LEDs, there is a strong possibility, and read the whole product description, there's a strong possibility that with this motorcycle, you're going to have that flash rate issue, okay? You can deal with it by installing inline resistors with the turn signals. That's one way to do it. And then you can leave that flasher or like we've done here on this Ninja 400, simply replace the stock flasher with one that manages the load properly and gets that flash rate under control. Okay, so I wanna get this to mount up pretty much the way it did, the stock one, but we don't have that rubber cover on this to slide over. So I went around the flasher one time with electrical tape and I've poked two holes in the center of the tape. Now I've got a cable tie. I'm gonna slide that through one. Kind of put it through the other. I haven't really tried this all the way. I'm not sure it's gonna work, but I think in theory it's a decent idea. So get that cable tie through the second hole. I try and get that centered up so it makes sense. That looks pretty good there. Just wrap that around. The idea here is just to give the cable tie something to hold on to so it can't slide through. Okay, now back over to the bike just plug that flasher unit back in definitely a little dark down here might be hard to see I'll take the cable tie now and just wrap it around the mount that was there previously Secure it in place. You know, at the end of the day, the cable tie just has to have something that's going to keep it from sliding. 
There you go. Let me grab a flashlight here so you can see that. I'll turn the tail off and I mean that's a fairly professional result, right? I mean it looks like the OE stuff and it's going to keep that flasher right there. That Just that one wrap of electrical tape you passed it through is going to be more than enough to keep that there. Okay, we're really close to wrapping this up. Last thing we have to do is secure all the wiring back here. You don't want to leave it a mess like this. You want to tidy this up and do a nice job of it no matter who opened the seat. When they look at it, they're like, that's a good install right there. So, if I was going to criticize myself, I could have done a better job of the length here on that license plate light. I don't really love that right now. I would rather have it the same length as the other stuff. So maybe when you do your install, regardless if you're doing a driven or a different brand, you know, if you're doing a license plate light, take your time, measure that stuff up. We're going to do a lot more fender eliminators on this kit, more installs to show you what they look like, show you how they work. And I'm going to cut this harness to go ahead and do that anyway. So we'll leave it for now. This protective boot is a great place to secure some of this excess wiring, okay? So let's just kind of get that all moving in that direction and then tuck it inside that boot. One of the biggest things is you want to make sure you've got all the wiring nice and secure so that it's just not rubbing or chafing anywhere. If you have the wires chafing on any metal pieces, remember, you know, you can count on the frame being grounded. Okay, so if you have a power wire that's chafing and it rubs through to ground, well, you're going to blow a fuse and that's no fun. Okay, you certainly don't want to do a mod to create drama for yourself down the road. You want to do this in such a way that it can stand the test of time and be on the bike in that state for a long time, right? Because the reality is most people, they're gonna have the bike for several years. Okay, let's kind of get that all tucked away in there. Get it tidied up for good measure. I'm gonna throw a cable tie on it. Probably secure it to the tail light harness as well. Once somebody comes out with a good integrated tail light, we'll probably go down that road as well. When you talk about these fender eliminator kits, you know, and you try to decide, you know, what you're going to do, what your needs would look like, you know, how you want your bike to look. As far as the turn signals go, if you're going to do a rear fender, with an integrated light and you want no signals, something like this driven, you just would get the kit that does not have the signals included, right? Be a nice clean look. If you want the signals, you could do that with an integrated tail light and be really visible from the back. So before you begin the project, you know, look at all the products that are out there and decide what speaks to you most and what are your needs, you know, visibility, safety, what's legal in your area. You know, are, are you concerned with what is or is not legal in your area in terms of DOT requirements for lighting. Everybody has a different position on that. You know, and it's good before you begin your project to really identify where you want to be. Okay, got this little grommet here. Wires all pass through. Get that slid into position. It kind of pinches them to and holds them. Now it's going to give us a chance to come underneath and make sure that we like all the the length on the turn signal and the license plate light harnesses below. So we're gonna double check all that. Just wanna get that and that looks pretty clean right there. I dig that. And this just kind of gathers all the harnesses up. And when you put it down in there, it's gonna kind of pinch them, hold them in position. Like so, kind of locks in there. And that looks good underneath. Okay, so that's all good. Remember, I removed this little tray. Go ahead and slide that back in. Got to put the hinge pins back in it. I would definitely say taking that out, you know, it made enough space, made the project easier, so you may want to do the same thing. And 
on the other side. Like so. Rider seat. Make sure you test that before you ride and pull up on it. You don't want it to fly off on the road. Passenger seat. Okay, there you have it. That is the full install. Now remember, what we showed you here, their kit is available multiple ways from Driven, okay? We installed the Fender Eliminator with the turn signals, and then we added on their all new lighted plate frame. So you have that licensed plate light. They also have a plate frame that is, once again, machined aluminum that does not have the licensed plate light on it. You know, their Fender Eliminator kits are different from everybody else's, I'll say that. They're really robust. You know, making them out of that machined aluminum as compared to the bent sheet metal, which is the most common stuff that we see out there. It's a way more robust, completely different concept. It looks great on the bike. It's gonna stand the test of time. This thing would probably make it through a nuclear holocaust. I mean, this is like a Fender Eliminator. God, I, wanna, I don't wanna say overdone, but it's just done real nicely, very well executed. It's nice that it's modular. You know, if you wanna go ahead and go with the turn signals, that stuff's available. If you wanna light the place, you can do that too. Pretty much whatever works for you, you're able to go down that road with a real high quality product from Driven. It's different than everybody else's. This is the Driven Fender Eliminator install on the 2018 STG Ninja 400.